you so much for joining today with Marilyn and Sarah. I was praying about our time together. God dropped a verse in my heart I want to share with you. And it's Ephesians 4, verse 22 and 23. And it says, lay aside the old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I know that some of you watching today, there's kind of a tension in your heart, tension in your thoughts about the old way of doing things and the new way, the spiritual way of doing things. And we would love to pray for you, for God to help you make that distinction and the right decision to follow the new man and reject <laughs> some of that old stuff, right? So hop on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you. And we know that God does tremendous things, changes the way we think, changes our attitudes, our hearts, really changes and shapes who we are in a powerful way. So we'd love to pray for you. And mom, we have a totally cool guest today. We do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and Leon Fontaine is our guest, but Yay. you have your own program. Yes. And, have, yeah. and you've been in television many years, but you have a program, six years, yeah. that really is hitting our nation. And I hear your name lots of places. Oh, wow. And That's... it's a positive. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, That's always good when it's yeah, positive. Yeah, very positive. So Thank you. Sarah Thank and I feel you. very honored that you would come and be on our program. Oh, I feel likewise. It's been <laughs> like to, to watch what God is doing with yeah. you guys. You just like, you never quit. There's well, no quit in you, Jesus girl. Jesus doesn't quit, <laughs> does he? But you have a book, and this is really your your life. Yeah. It's called The Spirit Contemporary Life mm -hmm. because you believe we should bring Jesus' life every place. Yes. Yeah, you know, I was raised in a wonderful pastor's home. My mom and dad are pastors. Yeah. And so very Pentecostal, you know, loving God, miracles. But we would do them in churches is where I was primarily trained. So we'd have beautiful music and, and Christians would be touched and ministered to. But then I became a paramedic. And when I became a paramedic, I, I remember one time stepping off uh, of the road in the middle of the night to an accident with a car upside down in the water and a mom hanging from her seatbelt. One, there's two children, one had passed away and one was really badly injured. And as I stepped out, I, a lot of the men that I had been with, well, I would always talk about the anointing. They need certain songs to have the anointing. They would need you know, men to stand around and, and the congregation help maintain the atmosphere for God to do things. But here I was with her moaning and when the lights hit the ditch, there was blood in the water. And, and you know, your brain goes through in a second. And I just thought to myself, I've got no music. I've got no catchers, I've got no ushers, no one standing around. How do I get the anointing? And God took me on a journey of how to pray with people in intensive cares, accident scenes, houses with their horribly broken bodies, and God began to do miracles. But I had to learn it in a way that had never been done in church. It's how we do it on the streets. And the two are different. Mm -hmm. And you need to tell us the end of that story. Don't leave okay. us cliffhanging, please. Well, that story um, was very sad. Like, I mean, we had to bag the child up in a, in a body bag and bring them back. But at that point, I began to tell God, teach me how to pray for people. And so after that, I saw a number of dead people raised from the dead. And it wasn't a maybes because they were hooked up to leads. I was a paramedic. I could see them go through the different rhythms as they went into asystole. And then when I couldn't do anything, we would pray and bam, life would come back into them. I would pray for people in hospital rooms where I had to do it in a way that was, I call it contemporary, respectful of the hospital, respectful of the person. And so I begin, my passion became that most of the miracles that we have seen in the decades past took place in churches, conferences, great big um, you know, open air meetings. Right. And I realized that if the fivefold ministry, if it was up to us to bring the miraculous to the world, it's gonna be a long time. But if we could figure out a way to model the gifts of the spirit so that that businessman in a boardroom would be able to sense if with a word of knowledge, or maybe he needs a gift of faith to take this company through something. We had, in my world, we had never really explained how to use the gifts. Or like my mom, uh, she has five boys, and one of my brothers experimented with drugs for a fair while, and uh, if he brought it in the house, we'd be eating supper, and she'd just stop. She would get up, 
walk right into the house to where he had hidden it. She wouldn't search, and she'd reach behind the tile, pull out his drugs, and flush it down. You know, we knew she heard from God. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> so, so it's for everybody. It is. And perhaps you have a son or a relative or if you have a friend who has a problem with drugs. This is a good time for you to call in. Because prayer can change everything. Your mother, <laughs> it was prayer. It was the Word. Yeah. It was the gifts of the Spirit. And, you know, I like this book because it's really Jesus on the street. Yeah. And I love this. I love to go to restaurants and talk about Jesus. I get on planes. They can't get out. Hey, <laughs> I got them for a couple hours. So call us for prayer and get the book, The Spirit Contemporary Life, because, folks, this is Jesus in a daily way, not just Sunday. Yeah. Or, you know, when you listen to a good tape or you watch a Christian television program. This is Jesus in you where he lives through you. It's wonderful how he lives through you. What do you mean when you say contemporary, spirit contemporary? Because that's kind of, I read the title, I was like, mm, this feels weird. How do yeah. you do, what is that? What? The reason I called it that was because in the body of Christ, we're always trying to pigeonhole everyone. So, okay, what's your background? Are you charismatic? Are you spirit-filled? Are you Pentecostal? Are you seeker-sensitive? Are you Baptist? And we've got, as soon as we find out what they are, we put them in the cage, the pigeonhole that we have for them. Mm -hmm. And so people would ask me at our church, are you a seeker-sensitive church? And I love what Bill Hybels has done in making every denomination think right. about being sensitive right. to people looking for Christ. Don't sure. be an arrogant, condescending Christian that's just going to ram away at it. Right. But be sensitive, respectful. So I love what he did. And people would ask me, are you seeker sensitive? And I'd say, yes. Oh, so then you're not a spirit-filled church. I said, no, we're that too. Well, you can't be both because some people took seeker sensitivity to the area where you could never see the miraculous or talk about Jesus. It was not sensitive enough. But in our church, we just begin to learn to speak about things in a way that would reach. You know, whenever, they, whenever you check out the prayers of Apostle Paul, he would often ask, would you pray for me so that I could make the mystery of the gospel known? He would say, I wanted to clearly share it. And today, I'm sorry, but I really feel like a much of Christendom just bashes away with the gospel. They just preach away at it. And Sarah and I were talking in the green room earlier that the Apostle Paul was so strategic. He thought through who he quoted, whether it was uh, even from, you know, Greek mythology. He right. knew how to quote things to touch people's lives. And so in our church, I begin to teach people and say, well, Ian, so your spirit contemporary, it means spiritually alive, filled with the Spirit of God. But contemporary, the word itself means it's always changing. So what was contemporary 10 years ago is not contemporary today. If I was to share my faith with an, uh, a hell's angel, for him, what is contemporary? Look, I might be gruff and tough. And, and, and then what about that, that, that lady that just had an abortion? What would be contemporary for her? when I'm contemporary with someone. So contemporary is literally us sensing Holy Spirit. And then as we begin to share our faith, we seem to know Holy Spirit will guide us. And then when the gifts go into operation in us, you know, I had a guy one time that was, I was signing for a parcel. And as I signed for it, within my spirit, I heard the word suicide. And so right away I thought, okay, this, he was a tough looking biker, long hair, tattoos, piercings. Yeah. And I thought, how am I, am I, am I going to like prophesy this to them? Thus saith the Lord unto thee, thou shalt not take thine own life. But I knew that would turn him right off. So instead, I looked at him and I said, don't do it, man. And he looked at me and goes, what? I said, don't take your life. How did you know that? Oh. And I said, and now I could have said, well, the Lord speaks to me. <laughs> but with him, he'd write me off as a flake. Right. And I don't want to move, you know, the, the focus onto me as though mm -hmm. I'm something. So I just said, I'm not sure exactly how this works. But dude, if God loves you so much, he's going to show me that you're going to take your life. Was it true? I was going to off myself right after this call. So I took him out for lunch. Oh. And I and he gave his life to Christ. Wow. And I believe that in the wow. business world, I believe wherever we go, God is always sending. You know, people say, well, the spirit, the gifts of the spirit are as the spirit wills. And I understand what they mean. I don't believe it's yes or no. I believe Holy Spirit wants to know which one. 
I might pray for one person and a gifts of healing is an operation. I might pray for another person and it's more of a word of knowledge that sets them free from the guilt and the condemnation. Holy Spirit always wants to work in our lives. And so as I taught our congregation in the boardroom, I mean scientists and doctors and policemen, they all begin to recognize they could operate in the gifts. They could sense Holy Spirit, but they didn't have to do it like a preacher or a TV right, evangelist. Right. It could be cool and contemporary and people can be attracted to it. Nice. Is that good? Nice, Is that nice, good? nice. And you know, you may be watching right now and you say, wow, I've never really thought that I could flow in the gifts. Sometimes we have this idea, you know, you've got to have a microphone or all this crazy stuff. But really, if you are a follower of Jesus, then the Holy Spirit lives in you. And it's just a matter of saying yes and yielding and following through with that. And I would encourage you, hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple copies of the Spirit Contemporary because here's the deal. I like Leon because he's deep in the weeds. He's not like this religious, hard theological, highbrow, difficult to understand, super, super practical. And the stories in here, <laughs> you're gonna love them. Oh my goodness, so much fun. And I wanna encourage you, grab a couple of copies because you want to include your friends, grab them for a Bible study, a book club. It's super reader friendly and very, very practical. So hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple of copies. And as well, remember, we like to pray for you. And we know that God answers prayer. So whatever the need is, you may be watching with a financial need, you may have a healing need in your life. You may have some family struggles, some relationships that are just misaligned or there's been uh, separation, dissension. We want to pray for you to see God do the supernatural in your life. And when we come back, oh my goodness, Leon's going to talk to you some more about the spirit contemporary and what that looks like even now in your daily living. How would your world change if you regularly experienced the miraculous? For your gift of $30 or more, we want to send you The Spirit Contemporary Life by Leon Fontaine. As a former first responder, Fontaine longed to see God's power at work outside the four walls of a church. He learned through dramatic experiences that we can unlock the miraculous anywhere. Leon is now senior pastor at one of the largest interdenominational churches in Canada, where he draws on biblical truth and personal stories to reveal how this dynamic faith can be yours when you live so in tune with God that you're guided in ways that are both natural and supernatural. We also want to send you Maryland's Supernatural Strategy CD teaching. Live with the knowledge that God's Word has all the strategies you need to walk in the supernatural. And we will also send you our Miracle Scripture card as a handy reference guide. Unleash the miraculous in your everyday world. Call or click to get this valuable resource today. this is the best day of your life. You say, how can you say that? Because Jesus lives big in you and Jesus makes every day good when we can get him into our circumstance. And that's what our guest is telling us today, how to bring Jesus where you live, you know, where you walk, the people you deal with, the grocery store, all kinds of circumstances. I say it's kind of like Jesus on the street. Yeah. You know, I love this because you have to depend on Him. You don't know what's wrong with them. You don't know if they'll receive you. And you want to be Jesus in the flesh in a sense. And that's what you do. Share that with us. You have a wonderful book 
on the spirit contemporary life. Mm -hmm. But that's really Jesus on the street, isn't it? In it the really circumstance. Is. Like I grew up in a wonderful church with my parents where I saw the gifts in operation. Yeah. And my dad and mom would both operate in them on the streets. I probably wasn't with them as much. And I grew up listening to much of the charismatic world, Pentecostal world, all under a lot of the teaching on the anointing, a lot of the teaching on, and for, I'm not saying it was wrong teaching, but I think I took it wrong. And without piano music and a band backing me up and catchers and greeters. So then when I became a paramedic, I was sharing earlier, that is where I had to get a miracle in an intensive care room with nurses and doctors around. And you can't pray out loud. Because if you do, they'll remove you from the room. Uh, they have laws in hospitals now that if you don't, if you're not the pastor of the person talking to them, you can't talk to them. So God began to lead me through people and just in conversation, and in normal conversation, and a simple little prayer, like God touch them in the name of Jesus. God would heal them. A guy on his deathbed. You know they didn't want me to pray for him, and so I didn't. But I just, as I just said, do you mind just praying a blessing for him? And they said, sure. He'd been unconscious for two weeks. The family was very anti-God except for one of the sisters and or one of the daughters. And so I said, well, could I just pray a prayer blessing for your sister's sake? And I don't mean in any way to be offensive. I'm always cautious, yes. you know? And they said, all right, pastor, go ahead. So I just laid my hand on this man's leg. He was in his last throes, 24 hours, I'd say three hours left. And I said, Father, bless this man. And I ask you to touch him and bless this family, the heartache and the pain that they're going through right now. Just touch them. Then I turned around and walked across and the, the one, they were in tears, the family, as God melted their hearts. And I knew I was going to win them to Christ. But as I turned to talk to them, the dad sits up in the bed and he points at me in front of the whole room and says, this is a, he didn't say a really good This is God's man. You listen to him. And she screamed and they all got around <laughs> I love the it. bed. I love it. And we all started talking for like an hour or two about the goodness of God, healed by the power of God. And so we don't have to, I don't have to walk in and say, I'm God's man of power for the hour. Step aside while <laughs> right. I raise this man. I just try to work and be contemporary and relevant, respectful and caring. God can do just as much with a whisper as with a shout. And you know, you share these things in your book. Lots and of stories. It really encourages me. It just puts fire in me. I think, where's the center? Where's the problem? <laughs> I want to go and be part of the process of the answer. And you will love the book, The Spirit, Contemporary Life. But you may be suffering today. And that's why we have a prayer line. We don't counsel, but we love to pray. And we don't just pray problems. We pray promises that go with the problems. Sarah, share what you saw especially. Yeah, there was something in here you talked about as it relates to meek, M-E-E-K. And that's not a really popular topic, but I was like, what's that all about? <laughs> Help us with that idea. I really struggled with Mamby Pamby, cutesy, sweetsy little Christians who think Jesus was a guy in a dress with sandals and big precious moments eyes. And I had to be meek. Well, I'm a guy's guy. I grew up with four brothers. And so then one day I was talking to a Wycliffe Bible translator and we were chatting about this. He said, did you know the word meek in the Greek is what the Greeks called a fully trained war horse? I said, that doesn't make sense. He said, those war horses would kill you. They would come, they would run straight into lances. They would jump over people. They were trained to take this man into battle and not run, to be injured and not falter. They were the most, and when you read about horses in the Bible, war horses, how they tremble, they can hear the quiver rattling on their side, and they're, they're just going, mm -hmm, you know, they're just waiting to get into it. And I thought, well, that doesn't make sense if they use the word meek, but it is a fully trained war horse, and I realized that a war horse was always instantly obedient to the rider instantly to its own death. And that gave me a new picture. Mm -hmm. That I didn't have to be wimpy, I didn't have to be pathetic, I didn't have to be, you know, mild. I could be strong and confident, never arrogant or condescending, but that I could literally be a man's man. And in doing that, God would guide me. Oh, it changed my whole world when I began to do that study on the word meek. Wow. Dude. Isn't that cool? Yeah, because I never heard that before. I read and it in I, his book. I was so like, good. hey, yeah. wait a second. That yeah. was new for That's me. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. This is completely great. Hop on the phone, get on the website, grab a couple copies. This will really revolutionize your life because he's got lots more stuff in here, not just about me, but about stories and seeing the Holy Spirit working now. And you know, one of the things, Leon, that I love about this book is it makes it accessible, makes the Holy Spirit accessible 
to believers. Yeah. And not just, you know, the uppercut. You know, we were talking <laughs> earlier off camera. Do people know that they that God speaks to everybody? I believe that God is always sending, just like an FM tower or a radio signal. He's always sending. It's just on the receiving that we don't hear from Him. And I think sometimes our teaching has hurt people. Like we often say, well, the Lord spoke to me. And I always thought, man, I can't be a Christian because God has never spoken to me. But God has never spoken to me in an audible voice to my physical ears. I've never seen an angel, but there's multiple times I've sensed a presence. and I didn't know if it was an angel or what. Um, so when I tell people that God speaks to you, I share with them different ways. For example, I can be in a coffee shop and of all the four or five other guys grabbing a cup of coffee, one guy just stands out to me. I just notice him. And I tell people, that's Holy Spirit. How many in the room today have just noticed somebody and they stood out to you and you don't know why? That's Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Go say hi. Ask him if you can join him for coffee. I'm alone as well today. And see, I just begin to, at the most basic, tell them it's a nudge. It's something stands out to you. And it's Holy Spirit bringing it to your awareness. Because the Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, mm -hmm. searching all the inward parts of the belly. It comes up from in here. And when people begin, when I begin to show them how casually I hear God and that I don't, you know, I don't get it in 40 different uh, paragraphs, it's usually a nudge in a direction. And as I go in that direction, sometimes He'll show me amazing things, but it's always while I'm moving into it. Right. And then you realize everybody is getting nudged from God. Just start. Mm -hmm. And this book will help you to know your nudges, <laughs> let me tell you. But there's something else that I have found, and I like this in this book. Sometimes we didn't get the response we wanted. So did we miss God? And then that can discourage you. You think, well, I'm not Leon Fontaine, you know. But let me tell you, even if you miss it, I think God is pleased with you that you tried. Mm -hmm. And so I've missed it. I remember yes. one time there was a man uh, in a television studio, a different one, and I said to him, you have something wrong with your right shoulder. He said, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I think, thanks. You know? But you learn. Yeah. And I don't believe we have to be perfect. Do no. you? Do you no, believe no, we no. have to be perfect? No. Can we miss it? Yes. And still God is pleased with us? Yep. And when I have missed it, I think God is pleased that I exercised faith. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I agree. And also, I've Spirit Contemporary is learning to develop a language that doesn't hurt people when you miss it. For example, I was speaking to, to a CEO and the CMO of a huge company. And they said, uh, we're having just lunch with a friend of mine. Would you pray with us? And when I prayed with them, I sensed something I should tell them. And I said, do you mind if I just share something I'm beginning to feel about your company? And they said, sure. I said, there's somebody that is going to destroy your entire company. And I think you already know who he is and you're talking about him. And I just feel like if you don't deal with him, you're going to lose everything. And then they, they looked at each other. I said, like, now tell me, is, is this is on? Because sometimes I can hear wrong. I can miss. And I just use language that's not mm -hmm. arrogant. And they oh. looked at each other and it was their brother-in-law who was the CFO. Wow. And they oh didn't my. deal with him. And eight months later, a multi-million huge company all went belly up. Ooh. So God, so you're right. God can give us little words. Oh. And I try. I like how you say it. I like to say it in a way that I'm just a vessel, right. and I can miss it. And oh, when yeah. you when they see your humility, they don't mind. No. Right. But no. you missed it. They're glad you're honest. Yeah. Leon, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I just tell our audience, make sure you grab lots of copies. This will help you walk with the Holy Spirit in your daily living and bring revolution on the inside as well as on the outside of you today. How would your world change if you regularly experienced the miraculous? For your gift of $30 or more, we want to send you The Spirit Contemporary Life by Leon Fontaine. As a former first responder, Fontaine longed to see God's power at work outside the four walls of a church. He learned through dramatic experiences that we can unlock the miraculous anywhere. Leon is now senior pastor at one of the largest interdenominational churches in Canada, where he draws on biblical truth and personal stories to reveal how this dynamic faith 
can be yours when you live so in tune with God that you're guided in ways that are both natural and supernatural. We also want to send you Maryland's Supernatural Strategy CD teaching. Live with the knowledge that God's Word has all the strategies you need to walk in the supernatural. And we will also send you our Miracle Scripture Card as a handy reference guide. Unleash the miraculous in your everyday world. Call or click to get this valuable resource today. glad you joined us today and we're going to have Leon pray for us here at the end because I know you absolutely want the spiritual deposit God has for you through his prayer. So Leon, would you lead us? I would love to. You know, uh, we've been talking about the spirit contemporary life. Now, we share the gospel in a spiritually alive but contemporary and relevant way. That's the way to do it. And so I'm going to ask God and he's going to do it. He's going to give you an opportunity and it's going to take place in the next couple days. And I want you to recognize him, and I want you, in your own words, the way you are, just to share your story. Don't share doctrine, just share your story. And watch the miracle God does in their lives. Father, you've been listening to the words that we have spoken together here on this show. And so many people are watching with a hunger for you to use them. So, in the name of Jesus, in the next two days that they hear this program, Father, someone's going to come across their path and they're going to feel the nudge we were talking about. You are going to fill their mouth. In other words, Lord, they're going to know how to share the story of how you touched them. And I believe it'll be the gateway to the miraculous. I pray right now, Father, that they would pursue love, but desire earnestly the spiritual gifts. And Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to just, the spirit of wisdom and of revelation and the knowledge of you, just to be upon them, strengthen them in their inner man, fill them with the knowledge of your will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Look for that opportunity. It's coming. Nice, nice. Thank you, Leon. So glad to have you with us. And grab your book. It'll completely revolutionize your life, and God will do miracles through you.